John Picard, Principal, Picard Chilton. Good afternoon. It is my privilege to be here to share the collaborative vision of the Picard, Shelton, and Arup team. You know, Uber has positively transformed the world, and Uber Elevate is poised to really herald a revolution in urban air transit, uh, connecting people and connecting communities in ways that previously have never been imagined. Uh, what we'd like to do is share a quick glimpse into the future and frankly, it's a future that uh, is really closer than you think. You know, the Picard, Chilton, and Arup team are known for taking on some of the world's toughest design challenges. Whether it's a mile-high skyscraper in the heart of the Middle East, or whether it's the Uber Mega Skyport, uh, we bring a, a unique discipline and vision to the process. And in that, we can help to serve our global business clients and aviation clients at the extremely high level. And, and we're really excited to share how we've approached this problem. Now let's start with a challenge. And you've heard it, so we're going to be brief. But we're dealing with a mega skyport. So a thousand landings, a thousand takeoffs per hour. That translates to approximately 10,000 people per hour. That is insane, and but achievable. And we're going to do it on three acres, or if uh, real estate requirements require it, less. Let me put that in perspective. Uh, the image you see on the left there is the footprint of LAX, well over 3,000 acres. LAX today is handling approximately 20,000 people per hour. Our charge is to do that, you know, half that capacity, but that little speck on the right, that's the three acres. And that is the transformation that we have to occur to allow Uber to position the skyports around the globe, around our cities, effectively to meet their intermodal requirements. So let's start, and we're going to build up the prototype that we've assembled to help us achieve that. The landing's pretty easy. You've heard the metrics before. It's approximately 20 landings per second. The takeoff's approximately 20 landings per second. That's so easy. The hard part is docking. Uh, because what we need to do is battery technology. Currently, it's estimated that we might do a, an appropriate recycle on the, on, the, on the recharge in maybe five to seven minutes. That will improve with technology. But what's, what's not really going to change is uh, the human factor. Human beings need to disembark. They need to get on. They need to get comfortable. And that, that's going to require some time. So when you do the arithmetic, as we've, we've all done rather, rather carefully, um, you, you fill up this the three acre site is basically filled up. We've all gone through different number of docking stations, whether it's you know, 15, 16, 12, but you need to have that per uh, TLOF to be able to manage the process. So what we've done is we've worked vertically. Now, I will tell you, I've spent my career designing skyscrapers. My daughters would, would often suggest, Dad, you don't do a project that doesn't have a lot of elevators. And we didn't back into this one, but we realized is Vertical transportation technology has allowed us to do all the things we're doing today. Uh, it is safe, it is reliable, it is effective, and it's the key to helping us unlock the throughput that we required here. So this little animation accelerated four times, that's important for you to know, begins to demonstrate how you come in on the TLOF, you move through in a very straightforward motion into a kind of a, a, a cycling elevator system, and in essence there are a series of, of, of sliding chiclets. What we're able to do is as soon as the aircraft is on the chiclet, we can lock in and, and start the battery recharge immediately. 
And then what happens is the vehicle goes down into the docking bay so that the passengers are moving through the system completely safe and controlled environment. So let me start to build up the, the components of the, of the structure. So there's a flight deck, and you're going to see in, in our base proposal we've got two layers of flight deck. There's a, there's a real good reason for that. But then in the docking zone, we've got a, sort of a vertical stack of four, which allows us to develop the whole system. And what you see in those yellow zones is our, our, our Uber clients can come up gracefully, safely, uh, spend a pleasurable moment, moment in the boarding uh, gate, and then board their craft. Um, as we, we've assembled the structure, you know, sustainability is important, and you can appreciate that we'll all deliver a highly sustainable uh, facility. I think one of the key things that's important, though, it's not just about energy efficiency and sustainability. It's about creating a rich experience. And so one of the themes throughout much of the conference is how do we engage nature? And you'll see in our concept that nature is a critical, important component to our design. Nature safely conceived, though, to protect birds because plants and aviation are very, very bad uh, partners. So we have to be critically careful. And what you'll see is we've protected nature through bird-safe glass to make sure we don't have any potential unwanted conflicts. Um, here's what you're seeing is one docking module. So we start to get close in capacity, but we're not there. In order to get to the throughput that is the requirement, 1,000 landings, we basically need to take that module, multiply it times six. And so what you're seeing here is, I'll call it a, it's a, it's a base proposal. Um, there are so many factors that will ultimately guide the design of, of what we do. Uh, regulatory environment is going to be a challenge. Acoustic environment, political environment, real estate value, besides all the optimal controls about how planes want to fly and where they want to fly. So in order to serve Uber at the highest level, we have to have a system that allows them to adapt. And that's what you'll see here, is whether it is over a water body, whether it is over a highway, which is our base case proposal, where we really think the integration of the acoustic environment and the highway environment and uh, mass transit can all come together it makes a lot of sense. But we may also choose to put Uber in a, an extremely tight urban environment where it may go on top of a skyscraper or it may actually span between multiple skyscrapers. Those are all the permutations that we can achieve. Now, looking forward, I'm not sure this would fly through all the approvals in New York, uh, but, you know, we're, I think... Honestly, these images truly begin to capture the magic. And I think what you all have to recognize is Uber's vision is magical. It's transformational. It's about giving us freedom. And it will, in fact, help serve all of us at a higher level and create enormous opportunities for, for growth. So here is our base structure uh, located above a highway. Uh, you're moving frontally toward it. You can see uh, we've got the uh, LRT down the center lane. Uh, we envisioned that these would be organized in, when you're, when you're seeking that kind of a throughput, it's likely to be in a dense urban condition. And part of what we're trying to do is make sure that the architecture not only solves the throughput, but frankly, contributes to the character, the dignity, and the grace of our community. So one of the keys to our ability to manage the throughput, though, is working closely with FAA guidelines. They're very prescriptive about FATO separation and plan. I think we're gonna need to make sure we're equally disciplined in section. And what you're seeing here is it's a flight approach path cut in section where each the green triangle and the yellow triangle are out of phase by approximately 10 seconds. And that allows us to, to exceed all FAA uh, restrictions. This is most interesting. So first thing I need to tell you 20 times the normal speed. But I think this is, at the top is a section, at the bottom is the plan. And what you're seeing is the aircraft are approaching the skyport, and they're loading up. So they're going to the docking port, and then here in a few seconds, they're gonna start to release. So we've had our five minute recharge, the passenger on board, and you take off. I think one of the things that we've tried to do is not just work through the throughput issues in the, in the mega skyport, but work through it in the community. And we can't today tell you that this is the idealized traffic flow, but we believe that some version of this, some rational, linear uh, process is going to be essential. Uh, the other thing that's very important is acoustics. 
Uh, so we've worked with some of the geniuses at Arup Acoustics on that, and what we've looked at is we, can, we believe we can deliver the 67 dB requirement, but you can see in the, in the sectional diagram, most of that acoustic impact is well above the uh, public domain. So your impact when it, when it gets down to the, the ground of the skyboard is minimal. Uh, I, my team tells me it's the equivalent of a Prius driving by at 35 miles an hour than if you're standing 25 feet away. So that is one of the advantages of being able to take the Skyport and literally lift it in the air. We can, we can deliver the throughput on a smaller piece of land, and we can do it safely, and we can protect our environment. So here you see what you might imagine as you're at the end of your day, you're tired, you want to get home, and you're approaching this. And the intention is that this is an inviting, welcoming uh, experience. Uh, you can begin to see the lounges. Uh, we don't anticipate uh, that you're going to spend a lot of time there. Uh, you'll see as we move through the presentation, the sequence of flow. We've done throughput analysis, both vehicles, vertically in the system. That's critical. You're not here to waste time. This is not necessarily your home away from home, but the experience will be consistent with the Uber experience we've come to know. And I think what What's important about this is how the mega skyport is a part of our cities. This is not something that's put out in some uh, defunct, non-strategic piece of land. This is a part of our city. It's incorporated above our highways. It's incorporated in our LRT, in our bus system, with linkages into the street grid and respectful of the density that is consistent with our cities. So it begins with a notion, a simple notion, why not a park? If we're going to build this, why not make it beautiful? So we have a park. And we want to create you know, bicycles, pedestrians. We've got to have room for buses, LRT, and most importantly, our UberX. And so you know, we've got these, a very careful system of circulation. And it's, it's designed so the app will tell you where you're going. It will be guiding the car to be parking as close to your terminal as possible. And then what will happen is you'll automatically back in. You'll be recharging your vehicle right there. You'll be you know, disembarking in a safe zone, and then you'll follow the sequence through. And so your, your first experience is nature. And it'll be pleasant, and it will be, it will be uplifting. But you'll walk through it. You're not going to be spending a lot of time you know, buying tchotchkes in the uh, terminal. You're going to move to your destination with efficiency. We're integrating the LRT from below. You'll rise up into the system. You'll arrive at these very, very pleasant uh, boarding areas. Uh, where you're protected, you can, you can go out and enjoy and rest a few moments prior to boarding your EV tall. And then finally, you know, I think one of the, the precepts of Uber is safety. Safety first, safety always. And uh, there's no exception in this design. So uh, as, as passengers are boarding, they're in a safe environment, they're protected, the flight deck is above you, uh, and so you have a spectacular experience filled with natural light. You can see once the craft is on the little chicklets, that there's a little, uh, a little neck that will nest in with the craft, and so you'll be, you'll be recharging the whole time. And then finally, you know, here we have, here we have the, uh, this, this beautiful building. And I, I think one of the things that's important to highlight is what this has done. It's very easy for all of us to get wrapped up in the technology, and that's kind of consuming to, to everyone in the room. But I think what's most important is the freedom. The freedom that Uber is providing all of us to live our lives, to be able to spend more time with our families, to get off the roads, to get off the tyranny of the roads, and to get home, and, and to do it in a, in a beautiful and pleasant way. So with that, let us give you a little bit of the experience that an Uber customer may have as you're coming off the expressway and your UberX and approaching the system.
Uber Elevate. It's closer than you think. Thanks very much.